to today's webinar series presented by Innovative E, uh, making Microsoft Project more collaborative for hybrid work. So let's dive in and get to work. Today's agenda is to learn why Microsoft Teams is the most obvious choice for project and work management in today's hybrid work environment. We're going to explore the basics of integrating Microsoft Project with Teams. We're going to also explore the new project for the web as a scheduling option. Discuss how Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power BI enhance the work and project management experience in Teams. And we're going to see how Innovative Ease Teams for PM app brings work and project management to life in Teams. So without further ado, a little bit more about Innovative E. We are a Microsoft Gold Partner in Project Portfolio Management, and our mission is to transform work and project management into a competitive or a strategic advantage for our customers with a modern cloud-based collaboration tool set that enables everyone to work toward your core objectives. And as a Microsoft partner, Innovative E has been recognized by Microsoft with five Partner of the Year awards in the last four years, including the winner of the Microsoft US PPM Award in 2020 and a finalist for PPM globally in 2019, 2021, and 2022. We were also a finalist in customer experience globally in 2022. Again, welcome to the call. Uh, I am Brian Quick. I'll be your host today. We're also joined by Innovative, o Innovative E CEO, Mike Taylor. Hi, Mike. Hey, everybody. Hey, Brian. Great to be here. Um, I've been at Innovative E for over three years, and before that, I was at Microsoft for seven, supporting the Microsoft project business in both financial services and Midwest. Um, and prior to joining Microsoft, I spent most of my career in project management and IT PMO leadership. I live in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, and uh, Mike, would you like to introduce yourself real quick? Sure. I'm uh, the founder and CEO of, of Innovative E. This is my second uh, Microsoft-centric company that I've run over the past ooh, 30 years or so. Um, I began my career, as it says there, writing uh, project and portfolio management software at NASA at Kennedy Space Center. Um, I've continued to be involved in PPM solutions throughout my entire career and, and really Innovative E over the last about 12 years has really focused specifically in the Microsoft project space. And we've um, been a, a key partner of Microsoft in that journey over the last yeah, 12, 13 years, I think. Oh, and I live in Merritt Island, just uh, 100 miles down the road from, uh, from Brian. Thanks, Mike. We're going to start with a quick poll. And Pamela's going to light that up um, in Teams so that everybody can participate. Um, please, please participate. I'd love yeah, to see the, we'd like to the get feedback. everybody's uh, participation as much as possible. There'll be three polls, um, and this is the first one. So which of the following apply to your organization? Select all that apply. Uh, is it that you're using Microsoft Project on the desktop, but only locally? Are you using Project Online? as a PPM solution? Are you using Microsoft Teams? A lot of us still lean on Microsoft Excel because you can pretty much do whatever you want, create whatever kind of grid format you want. Um, are you still using that for project management uh, or are you using another third party tool um, that's out in the market? You can go ahead and participate in the poll and Mike's gonna watch those uh, poll answers come on in. Mike, what, do you, what are we seeing? Um, it looks like there's a, a fairly good balance between project on the desktop, um, Teams, and Excel. And mm. I'm seeing uh, there's a little bit of a third-party tool, about 16% there, and, and um, Project Online as a PPM solution is about 9 or 10%, it looks like. So um, mm. kind of what we would, I guess, expect there. Uh, teams and Excel, um, always always big. Uh, Email is always another one. If, if that was on the list, I think people would probably say, yeah. <laughs> I don't necessarily think of it as a project management tool, but it, oftentimes it is, you know, share, uh, artifact and collaboration sharing and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So, yep, looks like it's uh, still about um, Teams 28%, Excel 24, 20 on project on the desktop, uh, 17 okay. third party, 
and 10 project online. Interesting. OK, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what we generally would expect to see out there. And there's probably a good chance that a lot of those project desktop folks out there are also using Teams. Right. Um, and we'll talk about the subject of today is really combining those two things together, right? Yep, 48 responses too. So everybody's doing really well. It's a high participation. Keep oh, up. good. Good. Thanks. Thanks for doing that. So tell us a little bit more. Second full question. Exploring your challenges. So which of these um, apply to your team or organization? Multiple choice. Project information is spread among disparate legacy systems. You're wasting time on tedious, repetitive tasks. You need complete visibility to help drive decisions, but your data doesn't support it. And your work is managing efficiently with disconnected tools. Let's see what y'all have to say about that. Disconnected tools out to, I feel like I want to do like the horse race announcer voice. <laughs> <It's off to laughs> a quick start and coming down the back straight yeah, away. Right. <laughs> We've also got some responses in the chat for folks who are not uh, able to use the poll. Oh. Okay, I see a few, yep. We've got a nun, uh, I need to start learning up on online uh, and got an NA, so yep. So it looks like, uh, looks like the disparate tools inefficiently are dis disconnected tools about 30%, almost at the same as um, need complete visibility, drive decisions, but the data doesn't support it at 29. Uh, looks like we've got a tie um, between project information is spread and Wasting time on repetitive, tedious tasks at 21. So, yeah. so pretty good spread. Split. Mm -hmm. So if there's another challenge that you're having and you know, you're looking to get some advice or assistance with it, you know, go ahead and put that in the chat. We'll address those things during the, the Q and A session, but appreciate your insight and participation there. And good participation percentage, a little better than last time. So you guys keep it up. Yeah, I didn't really have an option there for everything's great, working as intended. I don't need any help because or else probably you wouldn't be on a webinar. <laughs> and we've never seen that before. So. <laughs> <laughs> so some common challenges that we see, which um, really line up with uh, a lot of the polling answers, is that the collaboration that happens around projects and work is always happening in real time, as we know, but the the project management tools that govern it really stand apart from the actual work that's taking place. So um, it's kind of a, a concept where, you know, project management tools are a representation of the work that's going on and something that you have to do to represent the work that's happening, which is like an extra step in order to understand and gain insight into what's happening. So to the extent that we can find tools and solutions that actually report on and represent the work as it's taking place and don't require that extra step as much. That's what we're trying to go. Right, really trying to drive that. You know, you'll never get to zero, but drive it closer to uh, less overhead associated with you know, the data management, the data entry, the data collection associated with the project management process. Right. Um, and then also we, we find that formal work and project management roles address clear critical issues, but tool sets are often outdated and or overly complex. I'd also add that sometimes they're just not the right tool for the job. So people are using what they can get their hands on. Um, you know, the example is Microsoft Excel. I mean, yeah, you can create a task list in Microsoft Excel and put some dates in there and put an assignment column, but you're not getting the predictable end date um, and you're not getting the task dependencies that, you're, that you really need in order to provide predictive scheduling um, or to manage your resources effectively. Yeah, and on the other end of the spectrum, you might have something like Project Online or Project Desktop and you, know, it, you have a very small initiative or something where people aren't really formally trained as project managers and they say, right. well, this is too complex to do it, which is right. one of the reasons people go, revert back to things like Excel, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Sometimes it's overkill. And I think PPM systems have traditionally fallen short in terms of usability and collaborative, um, collaborative nature. Yep. So it's finding that balance, <laughs> it's important. So at the same time, we also find that non-traditional roles, um, you can call them um, you know, citizen project managers or casual project managers. 
um, there's different terms that are used to describe them, but really they're not formal PMs and uh, they, they need to do project work though during the course of their job. Um, they manage teams and a lot of the work that's happening um, in uh, the corporate environment these days is projectized work. So these people need easy to use, good tools that are easily adopted and um, lower the bar in terms of, you know, bear, barrier of entry in or in terms of creating a collaborative project management solution and having that pow the power of a project management tool. Yep, absolutely. So at the same time that these things, are, these challenges are happening, we're seeing that Teams usage is absolutely skyrocketing. Obviously, um, I can't make a slide that would be an accurate representation of the growth because on any given day, it's just growing more exponentially. So it's already out of date, but um, we have over a million organizations globally using Teams. 91% of the Fortune 100 are using Teams and over 300 million people across the globe. So we have this amplification that we've been talking about the last couple of years of hybrid work and the tools that people are using in order to collaborate are increasingly Microsoft Teams um, based. And it just makes sense. I mean, so many organizations already had Office, right? And mm -hmm. um, and then just over the last few years, especially with the real shift towards hybrid and, and remote work, you know, there's been a, a big shift towards the cloud and, and you know, with the remote access um, the tools like Teams for doing exactly what we're doing right now for meetings and everything else, it's, it, people just kind of gravitate to it because it's part of the solution that you get with M365. Right. How about one more poll? Um, we're big on collaboration here, as you can tell. Um, <laughs> how are you collaborating today? So are you using different tools to collaborate as a project team? Are you doing conference calls, email, SharePoint websites? Still, uh, Microsoft Teams, other tools. Can you just uh, let us know? Uh, maybe if it's an other, just kind of type it into the chat if you want. If you want to yep, share? We have, a, we have an all the all all the above in the chat. All of the above. Yeah. Those responses are coming in. It looks like uh, Teams is slightly in the lead. Uh, other tools. Mm -hmm, good. Is, is um, only about 8% and then it's a pretty good, e almost even spread between conference calls, emails and SharePoint sites so far. I see, yeah. So Teams is 26% and all the rest are about 21. Other tools now is about 10. You got Teams, WebEx, okay. Yep. In the chat. Interesting, we don't see uh, Trello, that's interesting. Uh, Confluence, Teams and Azure DevOps, ADO, yep. All the above. Okay, great. Yeah. What's interesting is you don't see Slack. Slack is really falling <laughs> sure off. At least the, well, you know, it, some, some, to some effect, we've talked about this before, Mike, these the web car, casts are like kind of preaching to the choir a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> or else, you know, I'm not sure a lot of Slack users would be signing up, but. <laughs> yeah, so the final poll so, ended up about the same. Yeah, Teams was at the number one. Good, then um, you're in the right place. So what we want to talk about today is is really amplifying teams as a project management solution and destination so we can start collaborating on our projects and put collaboration first. Because chances are, um, and many of you have confirmed you're already using teams, um, after all project management and projects are about getting things done. So what better place to do that than in the collaboration suite that your company has already chosen to leverage? and invest in. Um, new, easy to learn project tools can be incorporated into Teams and are built to put collaboration first. And we can embrace those casual project managers in your organization while reducing shadow IT and disparate data. Yeah, Brian, if I can, um, in, in addition to in, embracing the casual project manager, the other thing that's really important about kind of the, and you hit on it a little while ago, that's really important is to be able to involve people even more, even if they're just a team team member. So somebody who yep. needs to participate or be involved in a project, maybe it's just to get status, or maybe they're just providing a little bit of input on one or two tasks that they have. In traditional PPM overly, you know, what we now are kind of calling overly complex, they're properly complex for some solutions, but overly complex for a lot of people. 
the ability to have a broad number of people to participate has never really been there. And with right. a modern collaboration set with with teams and, and you're going to talk a little bit about Project for the Web, there's yeah. there's um, capabilities there that allow uh, uh, almost everyone in the organization without additional um, you know expenditure and licensure. It's it's kind of baked into the licensure that are in those products. So it yeah. really does open that up significantly. Just want to make that point as well. Yeah, it's a really great point. Um, you know, some some folks are basically have a project schedule, project plan, and that's like a local file, and or they post it somewhere, um, either on a file server or in SharePoint or something, and that's really the project manager's document um, to help mm -hmm. them keep track of things. But um, I'm kind of of the strong opinion, and and we talk a lot about democratizing project management not only for getting and gaining additional um, people into the project management tool set and kind of um, get, you know sphere of influence, mm -hmm. um, but also the team members themselves being able to participate on the project in interact with it and collaborate on it. Um, it's not just a list um, for the project manager to own. Exactly. And and you mentioned this as well earlier that you know surveys and studies have shown by a lot of analysts out there, IDC Gartner, things like that, that the uh, the majority of work that's being done by information workers can be categorized as project work. In other words, it has a specific beginning, a specific end, and some kind of outcome that you're trying to achieve. Exactly. So let's explore what project management in Teams looks like and. I'm about to do some demonstration, um, so but I'm going to walk through a couple of bullet points first. Um, we're going to teach you how to sync the desktop to Teams using Project Online. So Project Online is a service that's available from Microsoft. And it basically allows a synchronization between Project Desktop and a browser. OK, and you can pull a browser in. Any website from into Teams into a Teams channel, so therefore you can pull project online into a Teams channel and synchronize your desktop project plan with Teams. OK, so that allows you to share your schedule quickly and easily. So you would have and retain uh, the full power of the desktop project that you are, are using uh, today or could be using. You would be able to publish your changes when they're ready to Teams and share your schedule with the entire team so that they would be able to go into your Teams channel and see the schedule as synced up by your desktop. And then you would be able to leverage additional features of Teams for creating a more collaborative environment, like, for example, the ability to have a shared file repository and to co-author your documents in there instead of emailing them around, and the ability to have like a threaded chat discussion. And you can surround your project schedule with other tabs with that have other functions and capabilities as needed. Additionally, you can leverage the new project for the web app inside of Teams. So you could have some projects that are being managed in the desktop and some projects that are being managed with project for the web, but the way that people would get to them would be through a Teams channel. And what project for the web offers, and I'm going to demonstrate this in a minute, is real time co-authoring. Um, the ability to clone or copy one project and use it again. A threaded discussion in Teams, of course, because we're now in that environment. Um, resource assignments, but it also has a Kanban board board uh, view and a timeline view, which is very similar to your Gantt chart view. And, and it does do dependency management and predictable end dating. So it's better than using like Microsoft Planner for project management because it provides the schedule and the Gantt chart and the end date predictability. 
It's like an upgrade of Microsoft Planner. It may not be for everybody though. It may not be for complex project plans. It doesn't have all of the capabilities of Project Desktop, so it might not be suited for all of your projects um, of all types. It's also limited to a thousand lines and there's all other things that it does and doesn't do. One thing of note that that people key in on particularly is that the changes happen in real time. There's no um, there's no building out your project schedule and kind of scenarioizing it and then doing it offline and then uploading it when you're ready. Everything just happens right away and um, in real time. Um, there's no concept of saving. It's like a born in you know born in the cloud type of modern tool. Um, and it, it should be used only um, only for things that are suited suited for. But it is a great tool. I mean, it is fun to use. It's easy, and I'll show you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to end the presentation. I'm going to switch to my browser. OK. So I'm going to start my story in Microsoft Project. You should see that on your screen in front of you right now. Um, I built out a project plan called Facility Upgrades. And it's a very, you know, pretty simple project plan. Um, I've got my um, start, finish, and duration in there. I haven't done a lot of work to build out like the work and effort or resource assignment, just because it's an example. Um, I do have my Gantt chart and I have my timeline all done up here with all my colorization and the way I like it. In Project Professional, as you guys know, um, if you're users of Project Professional, it's quite a robust tool. A lot of different capabilities and built in reports, um, different things that you can do, including baselining projects, linking between one project and another, um, et cetera. Not going to go into a whole lot of de detail on Microsoft Project and the way to use it. Um, on the desktop in this particular webinar. Uh, we have other resources available on our website which do address that. If I wanted to make a change to this project, I would change it here. Um, for example, I might want to change this to two weeks and then watch my schedule basically push out. It highlights what areas changed. And then I might want to go ahead and save that um, to my local computer. When I'm ready to make this available for others inside of Teams, I have a little publish button here so I can publish that out. And when I publish that out, my changes are now going to be visible to others in Teams. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm in Teams and I'm actually in a browser version of Teams but it would work the same if you were in your um, application Teams app, like your local Teams app. I'm just in a browser for the sake of this demonstration. I have a team called Ongoing Maintenance, and within that, that's where I put my Facilities Upgrades project channel. So I've, I've divided it up like departmentally, which is an option. And of course, you could do that by program or portfolio is just the same. But I put a channel in here called Facility Upgrades. And within that channel, of course, I have all the files that we're working on. Um, and we can co-author and work on those things together by, by just clicking on them and working on them right here in Teams together without emailing them around. So it's really convenient for everybody to be able to see and view these files, even on a mobile device, and make changes to them. I also have a tab that I've created called Project which is where I keep my project schedule. And as you can see, that project schedule is actually the same exact project schedule that I have locally in the project. As a matter of fact, the change that I just made, um, iterate on designs, moving that from one week to two weeks, has already made its way to Teams. It's uh, pretty instantaneous. So you can see that I have my timeline build out already here and everything. I've got my call outs and I've got my ability to um, zoom in and out of the project plan and the Gantt chart accordingly. 
I can even make changes and edit the project schedule here if I wasn't already doing it on my local project. Um, there's a check in and check out feature with this where basically you can check it out and then it's kind of locked until you check it back in. You can have multiple people with permissions, but they have to take turns. And that's purposefully done because you wouldn't want somebody making changes that have a trickle down effect on the project schedule um, at the same time as somebody else. So that is how you look at project um, desktop files um, within the team's construct. I would also recommend taking a look at the tabs, which you can use to pull in other types of information. So what kind of information would you want? Well, you might want some lists in there. Um, if you're doing some RAID um, capture, you might want to have some lists in there to do that. You can pull in other websites. Let's say maybe, for example, you want to do pull in like ADO, Azure DevOps, or you wanted to pull in um, another time cheating, time tracking tool that you're using or anything else. You just have the website tab. You can put any URL in there and pull that into a Teams tab. And then you have, you know, of course, you know, your OneNote, things like that. So if you're a project manager and you want to make things visible to your team, um, this might be one way of doing that. Another way would be to use project for the web. So I'm going to go to another project in a different channel called Contract Audit, and I'm going to show you how that works. Okay, in Contract Audit, it's kind of, you know, just a neighbor of facility upgrades. It's another project that's going on. I also have the same file repository because I'm using the team's construct. Um, but now my project tab with the schedule in it is leveraging project for the web modern experience as opposed to project desktop. So you'll notice that project for the web um, is seems a lot a little bit simpler to use, a little easier to use. Um, the interface is intended to be completely online. It's not something that you would work on locally and then upload. So it's kind of built for the cloud. Born in the cloud solution. Born in the cloud, as they say. So I can move columns around. If I want to move labels over here, I can just click and drag it um, over there and you know, then it will stay. Um, and now my labels are over here. If I want percent complete back over there, all I have to do is just kind of move it over. Um, the start finish date, obviously for a task, who it's assigned to, effort, duration, and you have dependency management. We also have a couple of other columns that you can incorporate for priority. There's a bucketization concept, um, and there's also the ability to have attachments on tasks and a chat for a task. Plus, you can add whatever other columns you want. Um, you can add a new field of different types and like flags, for example, or numbers or choice. It's actually quite flexible. Um, if you want to learn more about a task, all you have to do is click on the I icon. It'll bring up the task details. You can expand that out and learn more about this task. You can add dependencies, other attachments. You can add those attachments from your team file repository or from your local computer, in which case it will put them in the team file repository. Um, you can also add notes about a task, labels, a checklist. It's very similar to using Microsoft Planner, which many of you may be familiar with, um, but just with more capability um, for project management specifically. If you want to look at things a little differently, you can look at them in terms of a Kanban board. So I have different actual board views. This is a bucket view. I can also see things in an assigned to view. I can see things in a progress view, which is like your Kanban or work in progress board representation. I can then interact and drag things from not started to in progress to completed. Those updates uh, will automatically uh, be made in the grid as well as in the timeline. So it's 
completely responsive in terms of the different views that you have. There's also the timeline view, and the timeline view is looks and feels more like a traditional Gantt chart. And you can see you can zoom in and out of the timeline to get a large representation of what's going on. And you can see the dependencies that are that are basically the relationships between the tasks that are existing within um, within the grid, but you're seeing them here in a visual representation. And you can create new ones by just dragging and dropping tasks together like that. You can even push out dates and stuff by moving something, um, and that may push the timeline of the project itself out. So you can also see that there's a representation of completeness or percent complete that's happening within the individual bars. What's fun is you can filter tasks as well, so you can provide different filters like show me all the tasks that are on the critical path. Um, show me all the tasks that are due next week or this week. So you can really get a good representation of what's going on. You can even do assign to like show me all the tasks that Susan has or Sylvie. So lots of different ways to look at the data. In the charts area, it's basic reporting. So status, bucket, effort. And in the people tab, which was recently added in the last quarter, you can see that how things are assigned to people. Let's take some of these filters off and get an idea of all of the team assignments that are happening. You can see that Sylvie has a lot of things on her plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this task over to Josh. That's now going to be represented in the grid. So that's changed hands now, and that task is now assigned to Josh. Do you get a sense for the how a casual project manager or somebody that's not really used to using robust project management tools might embrace something like this, might find it easy to use, and get some real value out of it? There was a, a question about um, when you were actually going through the um, project um, desktop and, and then project online mm -hmm. connectivity of who owns the schedule um, and who can make changes. Oh. Maybe you can address that. It's a little different with project for the web, right? Yeah, it is. So with the in the back to the kind of the facility upgrades project in that schedule, the person that can make changes to it is the project manager typically that would make those changes. Now you can build this out even further so that others um, people who are assigned the tasks can actually go and provide updates in the tool. Um, and um, those updates would be available for preview by the project manager and then could be approved and, and, and make their way to updating the schedule. That is a configuration option. If you'd like to explore that further, we'd be happy to walk through that in more detail with you. Um, and um, you probably are going to need some assistance in setting that up. And in Project for the Web, who can update the, the project schedules? In Project for the Web, um, you can provide permission to multiple people to update the project schedules, and they would actually be able to see their changes that each other are making in real time um, while they're watching the screen. Um, the other option is to provide um, task assignments out to people like Susan and Sylvie, and they would be able to come in here and complete their own tasks and make their own updates and changes to the tasks that they're assigned to. Um, those those changes and would happen immediately, and those updates would happen immediately. So it's different in that project, the desktop version in collaboration with the project online service provides more capability and checks and balances, um, but it's also harder and more complex to set up. Whereas this is real time, people can update their stuff, um, but um, there's no wait period or double checking or approval process that's built in. I hope that answers your question. Let us know. Now, what's gonna be awesome, and we're all waiting for it, is 
for Microsoft to make the tasks um, from project for the web um, that are assigned to people um, into basically planner tasks so that they can update them via the tasks by planner app that's available within Teams. And that is actually coming soon um, in, in, in future release. Um, and we're all very excited about that and, and looking forward to that taking place. Now, um, let's talk a little bit more about how to do this stuff and how to set it up, because I'm sure there's some questions and, and we'd like to get into a little bit more detail about it. So I'm going to switch back over to the PowerPoint here for a minute. Now, if you want to do reporting, there's a couple of different ways to do that. If you want to do reporting with a project um, for the web, there is a dashboard package that's actually available from GitHub, and you can download that and then you use that with Power BI. Um, if you know how to do that and you can set that up and connect it, great, and you have the permissions to do that. Otherwise, you may need some assistance, so we'd be happy to help you. Um, if you want to use Project Desktop and use reporting there. There's a little bit more work involved. There is a, an out of the box um, report set that can be connected to um, the Project Online service, which um, we, we would be more than happy to help you do that as well. Um, so um, you can do reporting on both types of projects. Um, the dashboards exist to do uh, reporting on the project desktop stuff as well as the project for the web stuff. Um, so a little bit more about that later. So let's talk about what using Project Online, the pro I'll, I'll, I refer to it as the Project Online service, as a schedule sync for the desktop. What does that mean? How do I, how do, I do that? How do I get that done? Well, there's a few steps involved. Um, and it's probably something that you won't be able to do yourself, um, but it's something that um, obviously partners like Innovative can help you with. You need to set up a project online instance in Office 365, and the steps of doing so are basically procuring the correct necessary licensing. Um, you may not have cloud ready licenses at your company. Um, you need to get project plan five for at least a couple of people and, and an administrator. And you'll need project plan three for the project managers um, and project plan one for the project team members in order to be able to publish and consume the project schedules from you know, inside of Teams. You need to assign those licenses to your users in your M365 environment. There's probably an administrator that has access and knowledge of how to do that that you can talk to in your IT department. And this all requires setup um, within your M365 environment. And it's something that um, there are instructions online about how to do in a step-by-step -step way, but it's highly recommended that so you basically get some professional help in setting up the project online site collection. Um, if you're interested in talking to Innovative E about that, let us know. We'd be happy to help you. From there, you may need to do some configuration of the project online instance in order to provide the right permissions and group management, as well as if you want to start using the features like resource pool synchronization and centralized resourcing, schedule templates and schedule views that are specific to the way that you want to view the data within Teams, that's going to require some configuration and work as well. And then, of course, you'll have to add the web um, browser tab to your team's channel, um, which is pretty easy to do. All you need to know is the URL of your project online instance and then put that into the channel tab. So there's some steps involved with really transforming and making teams in, into a project management um, enabled solution. There's some setup and administration. Um, you obviously need to create a team's channel or, or a team and then a channel within the team, right? So the, depending on um, your access level, some, some organizations have locked this down to an administrative function. Others have allow people to create their own channels within a team or their own teams 
and channels. Um, so I'm not sure what your exact scenario is, but um, you could find out by um, contacting your IT administrator. But you need to decide kind of where the channel would go, who should have access to it. Um, you may need to request it from IT. And is there a team that you should already be using that you want to leverage and, instead of creating a new one? Um, and then you need to add the right scheduling tab to it. So if we set up the project online service, you would use the website tab. If you're using project for the web, there's an actually a native, <coughs> excuse me, there's a native tab for that available in Teams in the channel. Um, and you might want to add some other tabs like for reporting, for raid capture, um, or, or, you know, a OneNote, or as we talked about earlier, there's a lot of different options you might want to add to the channel. So with all those considerations, it kind of um, is kind of easy to make a mess a little bit. And so let me talk a little bit about best practices for using Teams for project management. So channel setup, uh, Teams channel setup can be, it would have to be um, manual. Um, so project managers would be creating their own channels. Um, that's a somewhat tedious process, especially if you don't have permission to do that. Um, varying degrees of team of teams knowledge um, may exist among the project managers. So some people might know how to set it up more comfortable with that. Others may not be. Um, and therefore, you know, each project manager may do things a little bit differently, which isn't really the best for team member experience um, because they're going to want to know where to find things. They're going to want to know if I um, am staffed to a project with Bill, um, he does it one way and Susie does it another way, um, then that, that provides an inconsistent experience for me as a team member, um, which is not really ideal. Yep, consistency is key to change management, and people <laughs> to do things. True. So because, also keep in mind that, you know, if you're gonna start using Teams for project management, um, your risk issues and other data that you capture is really going to be existing in a, you know a separate list or a planner plan or whatever you're using to capture that data and it's not necessarily going to be reportable so um it's in in a central way right um it may be challenging to find different project information because if teams is kind of in an un left uncontrolled um which is a lot of the the state and condition of teams is kind of grown organically and it's kind of hard to find stuff now that might be a challenge um then again we need to consider other things like what about project metadata what about workflow what about centralized reporting so in order to really address these things and make teams a, vi a viable product um, to use for project management and work um, Innovative E has created an app called Teams for PM, which addresses these issues um, in the following ways. It's built on Power Apps um, and it uses Power Automate and Power BI. So we're leveraging these tools that already exist in your Microsoft tenant environment that you may already be using in other ways in order to create a project management and work hub inside of Teams. It optimizes and extends Teams for project management specifically, and it centralizes the management of all project data regardless of complexity, and unifies Project Online and Project for the Web inside of Teams. It automates and governs Teams channel creation, so you don't have to create those channels for like manually anymore. And it provides tailored workflow to your business processes. If you have a certain way of starting up a project and it goes through approval gates, we can build that right in to Teams for PM. And it allows for central editing of all project data at a portfolio level and provides out of the box Power BI reports and dashboards that work on day one. And so we can centralize project and work management, modernize it using a cloud based collaboration, and drive insight using Teams for PM. So let's show you a little bit more about how that would work and how that amplifies the solution. Here I am back in Teams, and I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about some of these other tabs up here, which you may have noticed earlier. So I have a project report tab, 
And that pulls in Power BI and, and basically redisplays all the data that I'm capturing about the project into a Power BI dashboard that's created automatically. All I have to do is start a project and all this stuff is created automatically. I have an issues list and those issues are being managed in the channel, but they're also centrally managed. A lessons learned list and a risk list. So how does all this stuff get stood up? Well, um, if from the very beginning, when you want to start a project, all you have to do is fill out a project request form. And that project request form will have all the data that you specifically want to capture in your organization and we'll put it through your steps um, for approval. When I submit this, it's going to start that workflow and initiation and instantiation. When it's approved, it will automatically, Teams for PM will automatically provision the channel within the right team uh, because of the selections that you made, the department that you made, that you put it in or the program that it's associated with. You don't have to do that. You don't have to worry about who has permissions to do that or am I doing it in the right place or is there an existing team that I want to attach this to? Teams for PM handles all of that. It will actually light up and instantiate the project team under the channel that it, it's supposed to be in. And it will also provision the project schedule using your template with the correct tool that you need to use for that particular project. And remember, those two tools options are, should I be using Project for the Web, the easy to use simple project management tool, or should I be using Project Desktop and synchronizing that to online so that I'm able to basically allow viewability and collaboration on my project and teams. Both of those options are available within Teams for PM. As a matter of fact, it can help you decide which one is best when it's instantiating a project, or you can choose which one you wanna use. Your templates would also be effective. So let's say you had different types of projects in Project Desktop or in Project for the Web that you wanted to instantiate. Teams for PM also has a central app for administering all of the project metadata and reportability or reportable data um, on project status. So you'll see here, right here in Teams, I have at my fingertips the ability to have the entire project portfolio with its metadata editable um, in one view on one screen. So I can change that data accordingly, um, and then that takes effect on the respective channel. And remember, when I when I showed you how you can log issues and risks on the team's channels, well, those things are all being synchronized centrally to this app. So I have complete visibility on all of the issues going on in my organization, all of the lessons learned, and all of the risks that are happening across the board. So if you were doing this team's project management concept uh, by yourself without the help of Teams for PM, all of your list data would be disconnected. But when you're using Teams for PM, we're synchronizing that list data from the respective channel to the central app. And that enables the ability to have portfolio dashboard reporting across all of your projects, regardless of the type of scheduler you're using to execute them. So this is a portfolio dashboard for project um, desktop projects as well as project for the web projects in one place. You can see I have a central portfolio screen. I'm managing cost and budget and percent complete across the entire portfolio. I can see my active risks, my active issues and lessons learned. I can drill down into those things and see more about them. And this is just really a starting point for the types of data and portfolio visualizations that we can create within Teams for PM and Power BI. As a matter of fact, this may be the out of the box report set, but you might want something different um, or you might want different data and that's okay. Teams for PM is completely uh, configurable. It has an administration screen where you can actually configure a lot of the options um, and a lot of the data that you wanna collect, a lot of the different columns and the way that you want them to appear, et cetera. So it is very um, capable of being, um, of catering to the way that you want to do project management and portfolio management within Teams. And so 
Um, that is how Teams for PM kind of automates and governs and provides data centralization to the use of Teams as a project management solution. And I'll also note that we will soon be having um, another third option for project execution, and that's Microsoft Planner. So we're going to basically back it up another level and say, let's make it super easy, but let's still combine that data with the overall portfolio management of projects and work that are going on in the organization. One step closer to providing complete visibility on all work. And even more to come down the road. <laughs> and more to come. We've already done this for the Southern New Hampshire University. We'd be happy to um, have you refer you to our case study, which is unavailable on our website, teams4pm.com. What if I'm already using Project Online? Well, that's okay. We can transform your Project Online experience into a Teams experience. We can transition your Project Team websites to channels. We can structure your stage gate workflow with Teams for PM and Power Automate instead of SharePoint workflow and centralize all your project data. Consider this an evolution of using Project Online. Um, and we're now taking that to another level, a more collaborative level. And we're adding different types of scheduling options like project for the web and planner to the mix. What kind of Microsoft licensing will I need? Well, it kind of depends on if you want different flavors of this being the project for the web and project online. We have um, a service where when we start a project like this, we help talk you through that and we uh, make you familiar with the type of licensing that you might need from Microsoft in order to make this work. Teams for PM is a app source sanctioned. Um, I don't know if that's the right verb, um, but we're in Microsoft uh, app source um, and available as a partner app um, within Teams. So you can go to Microsoft app source and learn more about Teams for PM as well um, by typing in project management for Teams. So how do I get Teams for PM? Well, um, it's a subscription available from Innovative E, and we um, start at 50 users at $8 a month. Um, if you have more users, then we have volume discounting. That brings that level down even further. Um, our base implementation package um, with for Teams for PM by Innovative E um, is around $10,000 and includes Teams for PM installed out of the box, some basic configurations, reporting, simple intake, and training. We also have additional configurations, customizations that are cap that it's capable of handling, as well as migration services and support. If you want to learn more about Teams for PM and Innovative E, please feel free to visit our website, teams the number four pm.com. On the website, you can have um, exposure to all of our customer case studies, our infographics, solution briefs, videos, and podcasts on the topic. You can feel free to schedule um, a demo with us through the website. Uh, you can even take a look at our availability in our calendar for scheduling a demo um, and book it right from the website. Uh, or you could contact us. Um, my email is Brian Quick, B R Y A N dot Quick at innovative ed.com. So we'd like to thank you for joining the webinar today. Um, we we're, we're available to stay a little bit longer for QA. Um, I know we're running right up against three o'clock here, uh, Eastern time. Um, if you'd like to stick around and ask a question, um, now would be a great time to do that. Otherwise, feel free to contact me um, or um, use the website in order to contact us um, for a subsequent discussion. We've had okay. a lot of a lot of conversation going. I've been doing oh, a lot really? of <laughs> Oh yeah. Been going the whole okay. time. Yeah, a lot of great questions. I really appreciate it. Great conversations. Um mm -hmm. great uh you know interest in different areas and some really um some really good questions. Um you okay. can tell some people are, are deep into doing some project management. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good. Is there anything kind of like a highlight um or anything you might want to bring up that other people might benefit from, Mike? Um you know, there were some questions around some of the later questions were around um, things like, are you able to aggregate 
uh, issues, risk, and lessons learned into a, you know in one area. And mm. you know, I said yes, of course. That's one of the things we address with Teams for PM because that's been a, a problem all along. You can surface those kind of things in dashboards, but being able to make the changes and have it go to its individual project back out, that's right. one of that's always been a pain point. Yep, exactly. So, um, you know, I, people are already using Teams for project management. Just you know, it's just natural, right? You already have it. It's already there. It's where people are collaborating um, today. Um, what, what Teams for PM brings to the table is that centralization of the data. So then it becomes reportable information. Otherwise, it's it's going to be really sprinkled throughout Teams and different channels and stuff. And unless you're really governing the way that projects are um, that come to life inside of Teams in an organized way, then you're never going to be able to capture that data centrally. Right. Somebody uh, just asked, Tracy just asked a question, does Teams for PM have a dashboard to report on overall resource planning or capacity planning? Coming soon, Mike, coming soon. <laughs> coming um, soon. So we are building that right now. Um, we are determining our design for that. Um, the goal is um, at first, at least to provide reporting on resources and assignments across all three of the scheduling options, right. um, but then get deeper into capacity planning with a future version. So yes, it's on our roadmap. Um, we'd love to take you along for that ride and get your feedback. Now, of course, there is capacity planning already available, like in Project Online, and to a lesser right. extent within Project for the Web. So it's already there, which is one of the reasons we, you know, haven't tackled the integrated uh, piece yet. But it is coming, like you said. Yeah, you're right. And respectively, on the different tools, there's varying degrees of resource management that are available, from um, being simple task assignments. Um, in project for the web to full resource capacity planning with project yeah, online that. and desktop, um, but they're separate. So yep. our intention is to bring them together, just like we brought together the other data within the report set. Yep, absolutely. I think that's the end of the questions right now. We were able to okay. uh, handle most of them. Um, unfortunately, one person said the Teams for PM was was blocked on their, <laughs> their site, so teamsforpm.com. Oh, it's, they're, they're kidding. Yeah. Oh, well. But yeah, um, great questions. Maybe, yeah, enjoyed the that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so they must have like a whitelist internally on their firewall yeah, or something. Yeah, their right? IT. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was really a pleasure having you today. Thanks for joining. Um, if there's really anything at all we can do to help, even if it's just answer a question, let us know. Um, and this is what we do every day. So um, we we I think we get it. Um, so without uh. Uh, on behalf of uh, Mike Taylor, um, Pamela Melville, who's uh, coordinating the call today, and the rest of the Innovative E team, thanks so much for coming to our webinar. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. That was awesome.